Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Digital Health Entrepreneurship. If this is your first time here, my name is Seth Silvers and I'm here with Lee Black and Lawrence Gerard. And on today's episode, we're gonna talk about why there's some gaps in the market for healthcare professionals that are wanting to invest in healthcare companies. Lawrence, help me understand a little bit more, like is it simple for a healthcare professional to go and find you know, companies that they can invest in in their own industry? Uh, no, it's not. I would say they're generally very busy, you know, working 40, 60, 80 hour work weeks in medicine and they just don't get approached that frequently um, from high quality entrepreneurs. And so we've been thinking about starting a crowdfunding platform uh, called healthcareshares.com. We purchased the name for that a few moments ago where healthcare entrepreneurs could list their ventures and raise capital from healthcare professionals who want to invest as little as $500 all the way up to a hundred thousand dollars. And uh, a new regulation called the regulation CF allows for these crowdfunding portals where you have to register them with the sec. Um, and so we're thinking about starting a crowdfunding platform instead of a venture capital fund, which might be your first instinct is, Oh, well, I'll just start a venture capital fund because I know so many doctors that want to invest in things. But I think in many ways, a crowdfunding platform is more attractive. And why would you limit it to the audience primarily to healthcare professionals? So, for instance, on this health on this crowdfunding platform, you wouldn't have you know, like like a t-shirt company or anything like that. How would you how would you limit that? Just mm. well, we wouldn't limit it. It's more of a strategy. I mean, anybody that wants to invest in a good healthcare idea should be able to but it's more of a strategy that this is where healthcare professionals go when they want to invest in entrepreneurs that solve the problems that they care about. Hmm. Yeah. I'd love to see what you know, the first few projects and first few companies would be with it, whether there would be devices, uh, you know, who knows? Medicine, who really, knows? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think it would be really valuable for people because I mean, everybody has their own interests. I mean, think about a time like right now where, I mean, healthcare companies, are at the forefront of people's minds and innovation in healthcare. So if there was a place for people to go to be able to find the companies that are innovating in healthcare, and, and if anybody, whether you make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year or whether you want to invest a couple thousand dollars that you have into a healthcare company, being able to do that would be huge. Lawrence, why, uh, like, are you set on it being a crowdfunding site, this idea versus a venture capital fund? Because you could also just have a fund that a lot of people buy into and then you're making those investment decisions. What would be the pros and cons of those? Yeah, I mean, we did start a small fund a few years ago called Hippocrates Ventures. And um, we raised about half a million dollars and made a few good investments. But the problem with the fund is that you raise $10 million and um, you, know, you might invest in 20 companies. So you can only help 20 companies. What if you could actually help, you know, thousands of companies raise capital, you'd have such a bigger impact. And so I think that that's more attractive in many ways to have a big, large impact rather than just, oh, we invested in 20 companies and we made a bunch of money. I mean, something like healthcareshares.com could really um, like change the way that like all healthcare entrepreneurs raise their early rounds of capital rather than just helping 20 companies. And the thing I don't like about the fund is that you have to be kind of like hyper conservative in a fund. You're supposed to talk to like thousands of companies and, you know, invest in like the 20 good ones versus on a crowdfunding platform, we wouldn't really be making the decisions about what people should invest in, right? You let the crowd decide, you let the doctors and the healthcare professionals decide what they want to invest in. And so it's more, so where it's like more democratizing things, I guess, rather than just picking the cream of the crop. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if in a couple of months, healthcareshares.com is live. And so I know that you're only sort of dancing with the topic right now. What sort of things would you be doing in the next couple of days to potentially launch this, get this started? Like, this is what I think digital health entrepreneurs you know, can learn from. Like just the idea that you're going to do this probably at light speed and potentially in the next few days, you're going to start stuff. You've led us into that, into that sort of thinking. 
Uh, well, we bought the domain name for a few thousand dollars, and even though we didn't finish the trademark search yet because I was fairly addicted to the domain name. One time I waited to buy a domain name and the price went up a lot and it was really bad. So I figure like worst case scenario, someone will buy healthcareshares.com off of us later for more than we bought it for. Uh, but also we have some investors that we're considering investing in our venture capital fund. And I have to write a letter to them that's like, oh, well, thank you for offering us your money. But we think that this idea for the crowdfunding platform would have a bigger social impact than um, just having a small fund. I mean, what I'm really good at is organizing physicians and entrepreneurs. I mean, we did make a few good investments with our fund that looks like they're going to get a big return on investment. But I mean... You know, what do I know? I mean, I'm not like some world famous venture capitalist. I'm just good at organizing people. Right. Well, and it's interesting because I mean, the, uh, I mean, it's pretty good market research, like for you and Hippocrates Ventures to also, you know, be connected to healthcareshares.com where people are telling you what projects they want to see funded. And you're also, you're going to know the success of the companies that are on that platform, which will then give you more data to be able to make better investments. Yeah. I think the business. other problem with the venture capital fund is that it's premised on the reason why we're investing in these things is to make a lot of money. Right. Which is not necessarily the reason why a healthcare professional invests in something. I mean, for example, a healthcare professional might invest in some company that's solving some rare disease that they have a passion for because their mom had that disease or something right. right and so it's more than an investment it's it's mm. like a philanthropic thing it's almost like a combination of an equity investment platform and a philanthropic platform right. um and so that's why i just every time i think about doing a venture capital fund i struggle and i'm just like something doesn't feel good about it yeah. I do criticize venture capital firms quite a lot. That's the other problem. So you do, you, you do, but you're also like, you're working to, you're creating alternative ways of funding companies and stuff. And I think it's great because like my sister is in the middle of med school and I know that she has a huge desire to see, you know, medical innovation move forward. And so having a place where healthcare professionals or people that are interested in seeing that move forward could come and know, okay, there's 300 projects on here, there's 2000 projects, and they've all been through some form of vetting process to, mm -hmm. to be here. And they have other people that are investing in them. I, I think it's huge. I think it could be a game. Yeah, change. I mean, I think though, the vetting process for a crowdfunding platform is a bit of a lower bar. Oh, totally. And for venture capital, like the SEC wants people to make sure that something's like not a scam, for example. So like, you have to vet these companies. Right. But um you know, it's not picking like, oh, there's only 20 companies out of thousands that are going to be on here, right? It's just a different right. thing. And then the whole idea would be that after we invest in these companies, the or after the healthcare professionals invest in these companies, they actually act as advisors to the companies. And there's like a community on healthcareshares.com where entrepreneurs can ask for advice mm -hmm. from the crowd, from the crowd of doctors and other healthcare professionals. And I, I don't really see that on other equity investment platforms. It's pretty much just like people writing $500 checks with their credit card right. and walking away versus, well, what if you could actually use this crowd of people, you know, as like advisors essentially or introductions to potential customers and that kind of thing. So as we kind of bring this conversation to a close, I want you to, I, I want to get your perspective for our audience on something that you do without even thinking about it, Lawrence, which is you see a problem and you assume that you should create the solution to it. Like you don't really quite wait. Stressful, actually quite stressful. <laughs> <laughs> you, it, it is quite stressful, but you've also built some pretty amazing things. I mean, if we just look at the last handful of years and what you guys have done, done with Fruit Street, as well as the launch of covidmd.com, as well as you know this idea that's coming to fruition with healthcare shares, so what would your words be to like some of our listeners, whether they're physicians or investors, that they see some problems that they could probably organize and help to solve, but maybe they're just hesitant. They're like, that's someone else's issue. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think you should, um, well, I was going to say just do it, but that's not true. Um, <laughs> I mean, I think you should think about it and you should envision like what the future will look like. Like if you do this, like what are the next five years going to look like? And then think if that's what you want to do. Um, so I think that you should tread carefully when starting any venture and you should not just do it. You should actually think about it a lot because once you're in the middle of a venture with investors and that kind of thing, 
it's pretty hard to go back and change your life path. So be careful. Yeah, I love that. But also I, I've seen in you, like you're constantly thinking through these things. So then when the opportunity comes, where it's a solution that you know, you've kind of thought through already, you're like, okay, sweet, let's pull the trigger on this. So we will definitely be giving updates on healthcareshares.com and the other ventures that are going on. So thanks for sh letting us into some of the projects you're working on, Lawrence. Oh, and by the way, um, I thought I should clarify that Fruit Street will own this entity because you do not want to piss off your old investors by starting another company that they're not involved in. <laughs> that sounds uh, that sounds like an interesting conversation that we should have on another podcast episode to hear that story. Don't piss off your current investors. I kind of think that's a good thing to do. Right. There we go. Awesome. Well, thanks, Lawrence. Thanks. Hey everyone, thank you so much for listening to this episode of Digital Health Entrepreneurship with Lawrence Gerard, where we got to talk about some of the exciting technologies that we think are coming down the line and that Lawrence and his team are continuing to work on. If you like this episode and you think that more people should be listening to this podcast, please go to ratethispodcast.com slash digital. And if you're watching this on YouTube, then go to YouTube and subscribe, leave a comment, let us know what you think. That is so, so helpful. And last but not least, we look forward to seeing you again. So make sure to come back for the next episode of Digital Health Entrepreneurship. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.